Welcome back for another segment of EBMG's Melanated News You Can Use. I'm your hostess, Lady Lila Brown, reporting from the mayor's office at City Hall, where Mayor Bass just signed an ordinance to accelerate the building of affordable housing in Los Angeles. The ordinance was passed unanimously by the Los Angeles City Council just before the 4th of July holiday weekend. She was joined by Council President Paul Krikorian and newly elected City Council President Pro Tem Marquise Harris Dawson, who is replacing Curran Price after alleged embezzlement and a host of other issues. This ordinance amends the site plan review process to exempt affordable units from counting towards the review threshold. This amendment makes a focused portion of the mayor's executive directive one permanent, dramatically accelerating and lowering the cost of affordable and temporary housing. The city has approved 22 projects totaling more than 1,600 units for housing. Listen now as Mayor Bass speaks on the importance of this ordinance. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. I want to thank our council president, Paul Krikorian, and council president pro tem, Harris Dawson. And I also want to thank the hard work of our planning director, Vince Bertoni, and principal planner, Nick Marachuti. I'm sure I probably did not say that correctly. And planning commission president, Samantha Billman, who made sure that today would be possible. This was an effort underway by the time I was sworn in back in December, so I'm grateful to each of you and your colleagues for your tireless work to get us to this point. Last week, we heard the results of LASA's January point in time count, which provided a snapshot of the crisis we are facing and why we will not stop urgently moving Angelinas inside. Those numbers also underscore why we need to move just as urgently to build more housing which is why my first executive directive focused on dramatically accelerating and lowering the cost of affordable housing. By cutting through red tape at City Hall, we have shortened the processing time from a matter of months to a matter of days. And as I talk to developers, they have been very clear that this is one of the main reasons why it's so difficult and so expensive to build in Los Angeles. The city has approved 22 projects and save each project six months of processing time. So taken together, that is 1,600 units of affordable housing that will be brought online faster and at a lower cost, and we aren't stopping there. So today I will sign an ordinance that takes a major step in codifying Executive Directive 1 by exempting affordable housing and qualifying mixed use, mixed income projects from the process a site plan review, and this is one of the major complaints of people who are trying to build affordable housing. Like Executive Directive number one, this exemption will save projects six months of processing time. Saving time means saving money. This policy I'm signing today also encourages developers to include more affordable units in their projects. I again want to thank the Council President, Council President Pro Tem, Chair of Planning, Land Use, and Management, Committee Harris Dawson for their leadership on this and for seeing this exemption through. I know that the Southern California Association of Nonprofit Housing also played a key role, so I want to acknowledge them too. I look forward to working with the City Council to continue codifying the remaining elements so that we can make more housing available that meets Angelino's needs that is affordable and makes Los Angeles a more affordable and living, living livable city. Stay tuned to my YouTube for a full episode of Melanated News You Can Use as we continue to cover this most pressing issue facing Los Angeles, along with more news and updates on California's Reparations Task Force. Okay, but let's keep it 100. So I had an opportunity to ask the mayor this morning a little bit more insight. Okay, hi. Oh, Madam Mayor, uh, last week the California Reparations Task Force, they submitted their recommendations. Um, how could your office work with the uh, civil rights, human rights for some type of, you know, rec uh, reparations? This will help alleviate some of the housing issues with well, certain just, groups. Right, exactly. Uh, and I think you're making reference to the uh, pretty extreme disproportionate uh, numbers in terms of the African-American population, 8% of the population. 
population with 30% of the unhoused folks. But we have an opportunity to look at the state recommendations as well as the city reparations task force. So it's something that I know that task force led by our general manager, Capri Maddox, will be examining both. She's passing all these executive directives, these ordinances, she's issued the state of emergency. And then when we look at the uh, housing problems, housing discrimination, displacement, gentrification, all these things, okay, that has affected a particular group of Angelinos. Now that Los Angeles has a reparation advisory committee, why wouldn't some form of reparation immediately be applied if it's disproportionately affecting this group of people? Um, and they have a lineage historically of atrocities happening to this group of people, maybe all that red tape and bureaucracy that you're having to cut through, maybe that's why this group is homeless. So people like to think that the solutions that they're providing as a Band-Aid is reparations, but we want to get these group of people where they're no longer reliant upon the government for assistance. Or is that what we're trying to accomplish here? Maybe they want this group of people to be relying upon government assistance. So we're going to really have to dig in deeper here. And we're going to have to figure out another way to frame this question because um, and maybe we need to just go over and talk to Capri Maddox over at the Civil Rights, Human Rights and Equity Division. Maybe we need to dig a little deeper. So you know that you can count on me to really dig to the bottom of this. And we can do this in a way that doesn't have to be confrontational. It's not for the got you moment, but we are really experiencing not only a humanitarian crisis, but a human rights issue. If this group has always been attacked and hurt by that bureaucracy and red tape, I can't accept that answer. We need a little bit more. I mean, I'm at City Hall, so why aren't these departments working together? And I noticed that is an issue um, in government that we'll have this department um, in charge of this, but they're not communicating with this department, but they have uh, similar issues. So we'll see what we can get going there. But I thank you all for tuning in. Um, thank you for watching the clips. Make sure you check out my exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with the mayor, where we tackle uh, a lot more of the issues. But I think we all, even uh, members of the press, we're trying to we're trying to figure this out. I know she's a brilliant woman and she is going to get the job done. But right now, um, with this new budget pass, <laughs> again, where are the dollars at? Where are the dollars at? What is going on? Billions of dollars for homelessness now. I need to see more action than this. But we're gonna we're gonna take this ordinance. We're gonna dig into it and. Um, <laughs> We'll see where we go from there. You can get that all here, right here with me. So make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe wherever you can find me on your favorite social media feeds. We'll get into spill later, but you can also check out my website, Ella B Media Group. But until next time, take care and good luck.